It's going to be a foot race to the end as we determine who can run up steps faster. The old guy who could barely breathe. The six foot seven monster dude with his six foot wife, the longest legs in the history of the race. Or the two young, fit, athletic brothers running marathons. Who's going to make it up the stairs? We'll find out all that and more as we uh, recap episode eight of Amazing Race season 35. Jen. Reel me back in here. I'm losing it. <laughs> You're reinventing the the countdown order of fingers. I don't know. How yeah, we got I realized little... it was going to end up somewhere dirty, and I didn't really want that. <laughs> and the young, fit, athletic brothers who could have tracked down that old guy who could barely breathe. Greg and John, what's going on? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? <laughs> Good to be here. So congratulations, uh, which one of you just ran a marathon, correct? Yeah, yeah Gregory I, just finished New York Marathon. The yeah. New York City yeah. Marathon. Lived there for yeah. 20 yeah. years, never thought about running in that cold. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I wish it was cold. It wasn't all that cold. I mean, oh, yeah. It was supposed to be a little bit cold. Really? Jen, you're an yeah, athlete. I, mean, always... have you, I am. Have you run a marathon? No, sir. Anything close? Maybe on the Amazing Race, <laughs> <laughs> but no, my knees are my knees are not uh, no longer fit for such long distance running. Oh, so yeah. if the marathon is anything I will accomplish in this lifetime. Training for the Amazing Race or training for a marathon? What's harder? Ooh, training <laughs> for the marathon because the marathon you just gotta wake up early and grind it out. The Amazing Race you at least have something to look forward to, you know, like. You're looking forward to the marathon, but you know it's going to be a lot of pain. The Amazing Race, like you get to travel, like you get to see the world, you get to hang out with your boy. So it's a little bit, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is a little bit brighter. Than, than, <laughs> uh, in the Amazing Race, like most of my training was just watching the show. So watching TV is... Not that grueling. It is a great way to prepare. I mean, watching other people make those mistakes and saying, I'm not going to make that mistake. I'm going to read the clue. I'm not going to miss a sign that says taken. I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> I know how to drive stick, right? I could read a map. Honestly. Yeah, honestly, I mean, learning from those mistakes, because I feel like like the the teams who really do well start to learn from their mistakes from the beginning and then fine tune it. And so if you can learn from other people's mistakes and fast track a lot of those, it, I mean, it definitely helped us a few times with like not holding your taxi cab or paying your taxi cab or yeah, exactly. Like reading the clue in, in, intensely, knowing whether you should go by foot or by, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know. Yeah. There was by foot, the by foot drama online this week, people are going crazy because they think an elevator violated the by foot. They think the zip line violated the by foot. And we'll get into all that with the official word from the producers whom I texted during the show, just to verify things I already knew but we will get into those as well all right so um can you tell us before we get started um how did you cheat on the amazing race? no I'm just joking <laughs> no, the uh the amazing race when you're lining up at the starting line who is the team that you're looking at and worried at worried about oh I mean since the very beginning Liam and Jeremy were in our head they had acres in our head man really I mean, all, they just looked Oh yeah, they just looked super, super fit. They were in our auditions too. They looked super, super fit. They were in the military. One of our favorite teams are the military brothers from I think like season 32 or 31 or so. And so they were a beast team. So we assumed that they would be a beast team as well. So from the beginning, Liam and Jeremy, they were our number one. Wow, Liam and Jeremy. Hmm. It is funny how, how in like casting where you're, not really talking to these teams and you're just observing them and you have like surface level information because they make you like dress like your character um so you know things like they're in the military but you don't actually know you know how the brain functions totally and i like in my memory of them they look different on the casting couches than on the front of the race. Really? Like, I don't know why, yeah. I Did they look better? I, I mean, they were just like gorgeous it, it as if the they hair. were just- For me, it was striking how much hair there was. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right. They were throwing off some of the tattoos. I was like, oh, they mean business. But of course, yeah. like two legs into the race, it's Victor Jocelyn. Like they were 
they were our champions. They were the ones to yeah. beat. And it was just such a spook after that, like three, because we're waiting in that, like, uh, building in the temple, just waiting for a team to come through that tunnel. Who's it going to be? Victor Jocelyn, our leaders, or Morgan Lena, who yeah. had the express pass. And once they were axed, it was like anything's possible, truly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because what's up, Joey? In the mountains, hey, joining hey. us on vacation. Thanks, bud. Yeah, are you in Slovenia? <laughs> we're live from Slovenia, so <laughs> yeah, it, it was such a beautiful, such a beautiful country. Yeah, Joey is in Boston, so obviously they can't get real internet in Boston for some reason. Um, it's not like it's like the fifth or sixth largest market in the country. Maybe he could get internet at some point. That could do a podcast i mean we've been doing this for five four five years now maybe he can afford some internet he's been traveling a damn world so i can't even stall long enough to come back anyway steve allen dropping the 1999 i might have to uh send that to joey cavino to pay for a better internet service uh do appreciate you supporting the podcast each and every week thank you very much you are a gentleman and a scholar <laughs> yeah, so the first two legs, you're like Jocelyn and Victor, the old couple. That's who you're worried about now? You you start off looking at uh, Liam and Jeremy, and you're like, young, fit, buff, athletic. And then you're like, wait, older, skinnier, no muscles. How are they winning every leg of the race? And that's who you're worried about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we started to worry, like, okay, maybe because one of our strengths coming in, obviously, like you said, young, fit. Like, you know, two young guys. And so we were like, okay, we're going to be able to use that into our advantage. But then, like, you know, Robin Corey got second. Victor Jocelyn got first. Like, Todd and Ashley got third. We were like, maybe being young and fit doesn't matter at all. So that was that was definitely kind of a, a reality check for us. It matters more as the season goes on, which you guys, I'm sure, experienced. But I would understand, like, in those first few legs, as you're still getting oriented, um, starting to have, you know, thinking anyone really – could take it and then questioning like all of your evaluation of who could <laughs> who could be your competition Definitely. yeah i mean you guys started off third third and then went to the double eighth and then just started picking up speed as you know the which would youth and conditioning you would see like these later legs this is when you guys should be able to start shining if your your pay your training is paying off and you've got second three firsts in a row do I need to worry about the record set in season 27 of five wins in a row? Don't really answer that. Uh, <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, definitely, definitely started picking up. Did you uh, go into the race saying, I want to win as many legs as possible, or is it, I just want to finish not last? I think, for, <laughs> I think for us, it was a lot of not last uh, starting out, especially as, well, winning the whole thing for sure. We wanted to have that coming in, but I think for the first few legs, once we were eighth, eighth, we were like, all right, we just need to survive. Let's get through <laughs> it. Like, at the tiles, us getting an eighth, I was elated. I was like, we've made it to see another day. That's all that matters. But definitely, like, after we finished in Germany, we've got two wins. We're like, what's a third? Like, let's go for it. And now, it, now we're changing our perspective from not getting eliminated to can we keep the streak alive? So I think now you're seeing us in that mental territory. Uh, how the hell are you brothers, uh, and you're not fighting at all? Brothers normally have such quick triggers with each other. Like, you could say one word or just one stupid look, and something from childhood comes up, and you're like, you know what? You know, how, how are you maintaining this, or are they just not showing you guys bickering? No, Johnny and I just don't really fight all that much. We fought a good amount as kids, just, like, over the silliest things, like, in the room. And there was one time, like, we fought over, like, who was going to turn off the lights before bed. Like, we used to just bicker so much when we were kids. So I almost feel like we kind of learned, hey, he's back. Hey, he's back. He's back. I don't want to hear yeah, it. So I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like we started to learn exactly, you know, what to trigger, what triggers us and what doesn't trigger us. And that was the number one thing we knew coming into the show. It was like, okay, even if we start to get triggered, like, really dial it back figure out exactly like what we said wrong, talk it out, like understand like we have a common goal that like it's not me against Johnny or Johnny against me. It's like us versus the problem. So we like con continuously put that into our minds as like the, before the race and during the race. And that's not to say that we don't have words or things that could trigger each other. We have the toolkit for sure. <laughs> I think the thing is we know the toolkit really well. And so we're not going to pull it out at that time. 
yeah, when you're fighting for a million dollars, that's not the time to 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 get into little arguments. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, it's easier said than done, and I, I that's high praise. For, uh, like I, I couldn't do it. With, I got five brothers. Not one of them. Not one of them could I race <laughs> with. Like, listen, with brothers on this season, it's. Yeah, they're so lovey-dovey. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Both sets it's of amazing. brothers, yeah. They're like, you know, big, tough guy. Look at brothers, and they're all like, oh, you know, you're cool. And lovey-dovey, crying. They're, you guys are just straight, level-headed, never arguing. I'm like, what is going on? And then it, it, because everybody's been so chill, Steve, it's making Anna Lee look like she's a villain or she's bad or something like that. It's like she's standing out so much. Her, Chelsea and Robin are, are getting so much slack, and I don't think that... Anything that's happened justifies any of the slack that they're getting. I think she's an Absolutely. intense competitor, and she knows how to talk to her dad, and her dad knows how to talk to her. They're from down south. They're not going to do things like, oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am, could you please move up? They're like, no, no, get your ass up, kid. Like, You know what I mean? Like, what do they expect? When you looked at them, did you see, like, her, like, being disrespectful to dad, or was it more like an intense competitor? Gregory and I are both such champions for Steve, like hashtag team Steve. That man is so funny. He is so loving. And I wish they kind of gave some more of his character. But like you're saying with Anna Lee, like she is just such a gem, so delightful to talk to. And we've had, you know, time in airports uh, waiting at roadblocks to be able to chat. And it's it's just like criminal, the cut and the, the kind of like harassment that comes from it. So um, all this to say, it really is on the edit floor, the good stuff. And just hope that like it can improve from here. All right, Joe, are you okay, bud? Oh yeah, you know, just another night, day in the life of me. Just have, off all the time. Have a recola. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I figured you'd say something. I finally figured out how to do backgrounds rather than have. Yeah, you know, I was impressed work. with the background, but then when we couldn't see or hear you talking. It wasn't as impressive anymore, you know? Was, uh, yeah, well, you know, like I said, it's, it's always going to be something. So I told you I was coming in hot, had a lot going on, but... Um... I I appreciate you coming in. All right, so let's get to this uh, recap. Planes, trains, automobiles. We'll speed through some of this because uh, a lot of this uh, is uh, just uh, showing the beauty of this uh, location and showing people getting lost, which uh, seems to be... Uh... All, right. All right, we're starting this off. I was a little pissed off. Anybody with me? Do you miss the fucking Travelocity Roman Gnome? I miss him. I said it out loud. A stupid little guy. I miss him. Yeah. He was, he was as perfect. It, it would be nice if there was like, you know, something to sort of replace it, you know, but I don't know. It was always a nice icon of the race and always made things a little extra interesting because you have to bring the gnome with you and the little, you know, I would love to see um, Joel and Garrett <laughs> with their forgetfulness leaving oh the gnome God. behind. Um, <laughs> I'm with you. I, I miss it. They were tired in their beard. He <laughs> tired just to be hanging from his beard the whole time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the Expedia arrow just isn't the same. And in that Slovenia challenge you saw with the boats, they used, I think, the logo for Expedia as the arrow. And I remember being in the sky, just like, what kind of arrow is that? Like, why why does it have a dot like that? And it wasn't until I got to the ground that it was Expedia. So, I mean, I guess yeah. it's working. They're, they're getting it out there. Yeah, I mean, Expedia bought Travelocity, so they're like, we're not going to use your little, uh, we're not going to use your little mascot. We got this arrow. Look at this thing here. We got this arrow. It's so much cooler than a roaming gnome. Come on. <laughs> The gnome is so cool, man. <laughs> All right. Well, let me just get that out of the way. First time ever going to Slovenia, planes, trains, and automobiles. This is episode 403 of The Amazing Race. Greg and John are kicking off at 10.14 a.m. They got a nine-minute lead on Chelsea, and then we don't see any more time, so we don't know how far apart they are. Do you know about how far the last place team was from you, do you think, uh, in the starting? An hour, longer than an hour? Who, who was last place, Johnny? Joel and Garrett. Oh, Joel and Garrett. We they, no clue. Yeah, because I saw they did get to the uh, the travel agency a little later than everybody else. Uh, obviously, yeah. it didn't matter. Yeah. 
Eh, didn't matter. They didn't show it too much, but it was a. Uh, uh, everybody's obviously getting on the same flights. So here we go. Uh, would you take the early flight knowing that you would be the only team to get on that? This has been a hotly debated topic. During my season, it was one team got on a flight. Everybody else got on the other flight. So one team to start the race, going to Brazil, 10 teams bonding and going. And would you take that chance to be the only team on an earlier flight? Yeah. I mean, oh, us. Or... Yeah. Everybody yeah. go for it. Yeah. They, I mean, for us, we 100% were going to try to take that early flight and they didn't even show us because beforehand you know we got on like a four something flight even though everyone else was on like a seven something flight we were trying to make a 1 p.m flight so there was an earlier flight like three hours earlier than what we would have been on before everybody else and we booked it in the airport for that earlier flight we're 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 head forward into getting that 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 only flight but i guess you're right like if if that flight does get delayed or stalled or goes to the wrong place you're finished so there is a trade-off there's no safety yeah james earl really said he did he would not want to be on a solo flight by himself he'd rather be in the pack with the teams and compete against them rather than letting an airplane jen joey how you guys feel about it i think it depends how much extra time like if it's five six hours earlier okay here here's a scenario it's eight hours but you're getting there at like one in the morning yeah whereas everybody else is getting there at at eight in the morning and you have to weigh whether or not you're actually going to be able to do the challenges and the tasks like are they going to let you hit the ground running when you get there that early or are there things that are time bound yeah um so yeah, that it's definitely, I think it depends when it's arriving, how many hours you would potentially gain. Um, and if you think, yeah, you're going to get there in the daytime and you can just start racing and it's a significant opportunity, then maybe it's worth considering because even if it ends up delayed, like you're still maybe getting there earlier. Uh, but there is something to be said for just knowing that you're with everybody um, and knowing that you're a strong enough racer to, to beat them anyway yeah why would why would joey know how to hit the mute button i don't know exactly anything you're talking about <laughs> welcome yeah I mean, you didn't watch the race right well i would i would, I, would, I agree with jen 100 percent, 100 percent, because there are so many races that we so many legs where you get somewhere and it's just especially if it's overnight they're not open till five they're not open till eight that open till nine and then you want to be able to play that so <laughs> this guy just welcome yeah welcome oh. to 1999 where we just found aol instant messenger and this one is the high speed it's 56k all right so uh <laughs> speaking of high speed todd and ashley are in the chat they said what's up to greg and john and i think this is the perfect time to talk about todd and ashley as they are going to slovenia to see ivan the impaler is this dracula's like crackhead cousin uh, what am i missing who's ivan the impaler I, i'm actually not 100 sure i didn't quite get the reference either but it, i thought it was funny <laughs> it's <laughs> vlad the impaler from it. romania is dracula dracula was based on vlad the impaler from romania yeah it might be ivan the terrible is that someone oh, man. yeah ivan the terrible yeah, yeah. I guess that would be a whole nother country. I think it's like Russia, but yeah. yeah. Um, that's okay. It's o- it's okay, Todd and Ashley. You guys, oh, yeah. this, this, you guys okay. didn't make any other mistakes this episode that we're going to talk about later. Don't worry about it. Uh, Ashley, uh, how did they beat us here? Were they going the speed limit? All right. <laughs> the Autobahn, while everybody believes it doesn't have a speed limit, there are places on the Autobahn that do have a speed limit. Greg, John, was there a speed limit or was it just balls to the wall Autobahn style? You were driving, you were behind the wheel, Gregory. I don't remember too much of a speed limit going at it, but again, we had Robin and Chelsea on our tail. And so I think we were trying to do a little bit of swerving, but nothing that was like hitting the floor, uh, pedal to the metal style. Cause I don't know what happens when there's no speed limit. Cause people are like, how fast could you go? I'm like, you can only go to speed limit, but if there's no speed limit, how fast could you go? Did they have like, say, don't go faster than 120. Like, was there any, any guy? Well, there was a good amount of traffic too. We I feel like, it safe. Like, Cause we, we, in our, we were racing against professional race car drivers. So when it came to driving in certain places, um, 
uh, Alex and Connor could drive faster than the rest of us simply because the crew felt safe with them driving. Like mm. it didn't feel as scary. And so I think that there is a certain safety mm. factor if the, where if there's no speed limit, they're like, okay, I, I still feel safe in this situation. So we'll let you, we'll let you have it. Yeah. Safety is so, always number one. Yeah. Yeah. That's hundred percent true too. You can only go as fast as your crew. Cause if your crew wants you to go like way below the speed limit, then that's all you yeah. can do. If they let yeah. you go really rip, you can go faster. That's really the real speed. limit. Yeah. Yeah. So this first uh, this first ride from the airport to Grasse, it looks like it was 128 miles, three hours, 18 minutes by train. Can we just pause for a moment because we didn't do a, a an episode seven recap. Yes, sure. Let's Have do it. Gotten to acknowledge the fact that they're finally self driving. Yes, and I'm very happy about it because it is introducing another variable where I think you're starting to see some people. Like the the pack is separating because of that added variable of of navigating, really, and it's nice. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> self drive always takes teams out. There's there's not a season where driving self driving has not like it, it is a hundred percent win record. It will always take a team out. There's nothing you could do about it. Somebody's always gonna mess up. And Morgan and Lena, well that well that I mean the. The driving just killed them, and I'll yeah. show I'll show you like uh, the stats uh, where everybody was along the whole race, the timeline, and you could clearly see they're going along, and then whoosh, they just get lost and go fall to the bottom, and everybody else passes them just because of driving. Even yeah. I, I just want to give Stephen and Ali props now. They they did the the fast forward. They did the hardest detour. They got lost for like an hour, broke down, cried, gave up, and still somehow they beat a team to the damn finish line. They are mad props on this episode. If this is the worst you could possibly do in a leg and they still didn't get booted, that should scare everyone. <laughs> it has scared us for sure. And like you were saying with driving, it's, it's nice that they've eased us into it. They gave us like an automatic car in Germany. And then this leg gave us a manual car. Mm. We're still on the same side of the road and everything though. Um, so I think we saw some weaknesses show from going from just navigating to then navigating with the stick. And I think Morgan and Lena had some trouble there. Yeah, not as many like, you know, of those like want, want moments with stick with people stalling and, uh, but right. hopefully. Stuck in the garage pushing their car <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, or just yeah. giving up and then saying i'm going to take a taxi instead of my my car <laughs> which has happened yeah. Uh, yeah that's true that even while i was watching the episode i when i when they started doing the express pass when steven and elise started going up the hill for the express pass i mean i knew what happened but i was still like how do they are you, like, right? i started to question myself. i was like do they do they get out this episode yeah <laughs> that was shocked they were make it but because for people who don't understand, I mean, obviously, we'll get to this. Uh, we'll just get to it here. Cindy Wigglesworth drops a 20 banger. She throws $20 down for Joey's internet. Joey, time for an upgrade, baby. Yeah. You don't have to use the hotspot from your phone anymore. You can actually get an internet cable in your house. My neighbors, my neighbors thank you so much for that, Cindy. I appreciate, they appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I'm in their shed right now. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> So well, Todd I, and Ashley do confirm that they meant Todd meant Vlad the Impaler. Yes, and Transyl mm -hmm. and Transylvania uh, Romania slash Transylvania. I'm not it. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I, yeah. I know. I'm just busting bulls, busting bulls. And quick question for Todd and Ashley in the chat: Who wanted to kill who over walking right past that entry? Both. <laughs> It was the, one of these. I will give Ashley like, props. She did a wordsmith like ninjutsu. She was like, you missed the sign. And then he said, <laughs> we missed. Then she quickly said, we missed the sign. We, <laughs> he said, we. I said, what? He said, what? What'd you say? We missed the sign. <laughs> I, I love that. That was a pretty quick one. Quick turnaround. All right. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, I love that. I love when they make you travel to travel to travel, which is basically what you guys did. Self-drive to an airplane, to a train, uh, going all over the place. You have mentally shaking your brains around, not getting comfortable sleep at all, just making you generally uncomfortable, and then throwing you into a physically demanding leg like this. 
love when the amazing race does that sucks to be a racer on it but i love watching the mental fatigue and shows like teams whose strengths like yours may be physical uh fitness where other teams are mental strength that that sometimes can pull them through these legs um and I'll show you an example of that later. Uh, Morgan and Lena are looking forward to airplane snacks. Uh, for people who don't know, when you don't get to eat, man, those airplane snacks are clutch. Because <laughs> you don't get a lot of money. And, to, and airport food's expensive, so you don't want to spend it. <laughs> what kind of airplane snacks were you guys hoarding? Well, I feel like most of our backpack weight was just like granola bars and water. And it kind of felt like it felt like rocket science in a way where you hadn't have enough water in the day to get you through. But like as the day went on, your back got lighter. And so you were able to to run faster. And so it was just like kind of doing that equation. But food wise, that was most of our bag. And we would just yeah, take the snacks, uh, Biscoffs, anything fun that they gave us, Gregory? Yeah, there were like these lemon chips that we got in Asia. I took like, I don't know, oh, like yeah. maybe 10, 12 oh, yeah. of those babies. Guy went back and I was like, do you have any more of these like little cookie things? And she was like, yeah, of course throw them at me so those were big and then also the meals we would always ask for extra meals as well because the meals yeah. were the meals, I mean, the meals were banger when you're on yeah uh-huh yeah we'd be sitting next to like camera crew or something they're like not finishing something and i'll ask that are you gonna finish that okay. <laughs> yeah hey quick right question away. for greg and john do either of you dance and not like really when and was I a break dancer some, like, remember break yeah i did some break dancing in like early college other than that, no like salsa or, or ballroom, anything like that. I, I was talking with my wife in the background and um, she was like, oh, she said, oh, who's on behind me? I said, Greg and John. And she really, and I'm like, these two have absolutely no weaknesses that I can possibly find in the, as far as a racing team. And I thought maybe that was it, but I don't know. Hmm. That's definitely not it. We like to bust a move. We're not like textbook trained, but it's a lot of fun for both. Yeah, but a dancing yeah. task you guys could probably handle. Unlike me and Justin who have two left feet. Yeah. Well, I mean, of all the things you could bust me on, dancing's not one of them. As I was a professional dancer, as seen on the MTV's Grind for two years, Google it. Who the fuck <laughs> watched that? <laughs> the Grind, all right? If you don't remember what it is, it's like Soul Train for white people on MTV. Got it? All right? It didn't last too long. No. <laughs> it was all the white guys trying to, you know. I'm just watching Jen's face through this Girl, whole you... conversation. All right. So uh, let's get to it. This is a, a roadblock. Uh, this roadblock is absolutely beautiful. Everybody and their mother wanted to do this roadblock. No stress at all. Flying in the air. They even told you it's in the water. If they didn't tell you it was in the water, you know how much stress it would have been? But they said, look in the water. Find some boats. There's a couple numbers there. Figure it out. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, there was more water before you saw the giant Lake Blit. Like when we took off, I could see some rivers and I didn't know what Lake Blit looked like. So I'm looking at these rivers. I'm like, I see a boat, but it's not yellow. And I'm scanning, scanning, okay. scanning. And it's until you like get enough altitude and you're like, oh, that's obviously the lake I'm supposed to be looking at. And then I chilled, could take my time, look for the boats. But again, it's like you don't really know what you're looking for. They even say body of water, yellow boats, and I'm still out here. Uh, right. trying to finagle some boats out of rivers yeah and we were we were super nervous at the beginning too because i mean we had said that johnny could do it because i had already done a heights challenge back in like the biltmore in la so we were like okay johnny will have a heights challenge this time and then we opened the clue and it's like who wants a bird's eye view and like johnny has terrible vision i mean just just <laughs> god awful <laughs> so we got nervous for a second that it was going to be like a sights thing but yeah like you said it it was it worked out for the better yeah. Because I think I would have done 1919. <laughs> okay. That's like classic race mind where you don't want to be complacent because you don't want to overlook something, but then you like almost overdo it, like has the potential of confusing yourself. And not in this case, obviously, but that's always like the balancing act of not being too complacent, uh, but not overthinking. Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe it's just me. Like, do. Do you guys not do any research on the country that you're going to before you go there? I mean, it's just a straight up question. Like, cause like, I mean, I'm old enough to know that Yugoslavia was a country and that this at some point was Yugoslavia. So I know it happened in my lifetime. So the only answer could be 1991. So like, if you Google the country, it tells you it used to be Yugoslavia and, and gained its independence in the nineties. 
Do you, did you guys get a chance to do any research or was the, all of the traveling, uh, there was no downtime? All of the traveling. You know what? Every time we had someone's phone, it was looking up a train for when we landed there. Oh. It was everything about getting to La Blanca. We, we grabbed people's phones, but I just, I'm telling you, we spent a lot of time looking at these different routes. So that mm -hmm. didn't even occur to us at that point. And by the time we were like, you know what? Now we're on this train with the other teams. There's no getting ahead. We were just pooped and, and just tried to sleep as much as we could. Gotcha. Yeah. So ch trying to get the plane to train to, to driving and getting all of those different things, you didn't focus on like, okay, what country are we going to? How much information can I get? Uh, that's. Yeah, that was, I mean, every that Christy, that's the pretty much only way once our travel was sorted, all that we did was research the country. But like you guys are saying, you were trying to make moves the whole time. Gain to advantages. Travel. Yeah somewhere earlier yeah, so. yeah especially right. since sorry. everyone was on the same oh sorry last thing no. Every, everyone was on like the same train at the end of it so we were just trying to find any little edge and yeah like you saw in the episode there were like a billion different routes that you could have taken so yeah it took up it took up a good amount of time and it was it was exhausting that was the most exhausting part of the race. <laughs> mental like, man that mental fatigue off. yeah joe oh, joey would have been eliminated a long time ago if it was a mental you know and the sucky part is we could have had like a six hour layover in Salzburg and just enjoyed Salzburg, like six mm. hours to just walk around. You right. know, yeah. It's like, uh, that's, that's the, the hard part for me. We spent hours when we could have just been wandering around. Mozart's. When you guys were on the train and you made that decision with everyone else to turn back, it almost looked like you guys were thinking about taking the chance to give it a shot. Was there not another train? going after that would did you have access to scheduling or no we did have access to scheduling there was actually some guy on the train who let us use his laptop which was very nice of him he was very very <laughs> wow the three teams um and there were no other trains like if we missed that connection we would have been finished we would have yeah. been behind all the other teams that came afterwards but I will say shout out to Todd Ashley, Rob Corey, because Johnny and I were willing to risk it for the biscuit. We were we were ready to to just try to make that connection. Any chance that one of the three of you might have split off from the other two? Or were you guys like pretty much the three in it? It would have been us. If we would have been the lone wolves, if anyone, but right. we got convinced. Gotcha. You see him salivating at it. You know, like, mm. yeah. I was just, I was waiting for somebody to be like, okay, go, go, go. And we're staying. It's probably <laughs> the right choice, guys. I got to say, it's probably the right choice. How do you know I just hang out with Rob and Corey? Just I, like, if I was on the race with you guys, they'd probably be home with me right now. I probably would have took them home. <laughs> <laughs> They're the nicest two guys in the history of the world. They really are. They really are. So, because this, sun, this country is so old, I'm going to guess 1199. Okay, Rob was not that old. Uh, Rob knew it because uh, he studies NATO, um, and <laughs> and then they get lost as they're leaving, so uh, that slows them down. Looked like Ashley guessed uh, right, uh, and then she got great directions, and then they beat Rob and Corey, took a lead there from the driving. Nothing to do with the tasks, right? Driving has been the difference in this leg. Teams t overtaking teams during driving, teams falling back during driving. You'll see it happen. Lena, not sure if they are nines or sixes. Maybe there's a seven in there. Uh, Is her vision terrible or what? Like, because there's lines under the nine. That's what she told us. Yeah, it was kind of hard for her to focus on that. And mm. then she, I didn't know about the underlines, which I thought was was pretty standard. Yeah. But she didn't know about the underlines for six and nines. She I, didn't know about the underlines for I, six and nine. It's it's just no. it was so interesting to me, like. The, like how nerves can can affect people, uh, and then she gets she gets it finally gets it the second time, and then she gets nauseous and's like, oh, landed. Good strategy if you're trying to get a couple extra minutes because normally they'll take you on the whole flight regardless. <laughs> but if you need a couple extra like, minutes, for sure. I was actually thinking about that when she said like, oh, I'm starting to get nauseous. I was like, oh, that was smart because then the no, she was like, great. She was great when they did, when she first she's like. She did look nauseous, though. I don't know if it was a strat. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And something that we've seen here uh, that I think needs to be highlighted, and I'm glad they showed it, was the, the, the support that Morgan was being super supportive with Anna Lee as Anna Lee's crying. And I think that should show people, but it didn't. They didn't seem to click in their heads that, that 
people like the rest of the crew they like Annalie. like it's not like she's an annoying like pester it's like they care for each other she's two people supporting each other they're the last two teams at this thing and they're still supporting each other and then at the next thing joel and garrett supporting them again like every team is supporting them rather than saying <laughs> like if they were like a a snarky team teams would be like <laughs> and then run off right no, that's so true. That's so true. Yeah, because I feel like people are kind of judging them based off of their relationship. And you made a great point at the beginning. Like, yeah, they are from the South. They could just like talk to each other differently. And they are thick as thieves. Like they are best friends. So like to judge them based off of their relationship is unfair because everyone else like loves them. The best part about their their relationship and especially the, the flack they've been hearing online is that when Annalise said, when I get nervous and stressed out, I call him. And now he's in the same exact situation as me and he's nervous and stressed out. I'm not helping. So she, she recognized it. And for the people online who are giving them shit, obviously they've never been on the race. Number one, they've never been at this level of, of stress. And I think, honestly, I think they handle it just fine because she's, she's doing what she normally does. She, she goes to her father and, but she's just doing it in a more stressful situation and he's reacting in the same way. I actually, enjoy their little banter back and forth in the car because you can see that they're trying to settle each other down while settling them, themselves down and that's very very difficult to do whereas uh garrett <laughs> they're just like well that's it where that's that's it all right whatever let's enjoy it so <laughs> it's really good to see their dynamic well i i when i'm looking at all of these teams uh you you can see that with the 90 minute episodes that they're now able to develop the middle of the pack teams and you're able to learn more about these teams. So they're showing different sides rather than rushing. Like they normally rush people's story and you get their whole story right in the beginning. Now they're still like unveiling things as they go. And I think a lot of what we're seeing here is, um, uh, teams starting to develop their characters, but the, something that we, we, if you watch the edit, some people were picking up on it, um, about, when people are about to say goodbye because they start getting this sad kind of edit and morgan and lena were arguing with each other they were kind of trying to be supportive with each other but you could kind of tell that there was something off this whole episode um you know how i could tell you thought Zul and garrett were going to be done because they kept talking they kept showing them being like we're here first we're in the plane first 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 and i was like oh no <laughs> this is going to be the nail in the coffin but i knew it was morgan and lena because in their vignette in their interview after they were all done up mm. they had all their makeup on and they were all bruised so, up yeah they, they're all that, that's it usually you're like <laughs> you know, you're, still, like, you're still trying to throw down a granola bar or something like that and keep moving sorry i'm updating my google one as we go so this call doesn't get terminated i didn't know it had an hour oh, limit gonna, gonna about that. i didn't know yeah. it had an hour limit so i'm just like all right just just go ahead subscribe well, just i'll deal with it afterwards subscribe, subscribe. Get some uh, donations today then you're helping need... keep the show going <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good i'm subscribed i got uh two terabytes john are you john are you standing yeah <laughs> yeah. Jesus got the standing desk God, oh. to get to work. Right. Right. Go into i love people who could stand and work uh good for you i'm sitting my ass right here but all right so uh all right, morgan being super supportive let's uh, all right so it's not so common knowledge for i guess anybody over 40 or 50 should know that yugoslavia was a country there was a car called the yugo and that's one of the main reasons i know what yugoslavia was because we always wanted to know what the yugo was from and it was from yugoslavia uh and all right so teams must head to the uh pl pl planicia nordic center to find your next clue which is 28 miles and 46 minutes drive lots of driving in this that they don't i don't think they understand the lengths at which you guys have been driving um what kind of directions yeah. is it uh, that you guys get it do you get like follow the highway for 20 minutes or is it like you know go down to the red barn and make a right at the you know like is there street names landmarks what kind of directions do people give you a lot of the time we were just trying to simulate google maps on paper we were just right each literally each line sometimes i think in germany we started writing um even like the little arrow to kind of say when you get <laughs> off the exit and whatnot uh but the big thing huge thing i think that really helped us in self-driving was just 
the mileage for each leg so that we're looking at at that hello <laughs> we're looking at that odometer and matching it up and saying all right yeah. 28 yeah. miles the odometer is going to be at this that's when we should really be alert so that's what was really keeping us kind of vigilant what we were doing silly little things Ooh. like that make all the difference like it's those little things like that can make such a huge difference it saves you from being 10 20 miles too far which is 15 minutes in the wrong direction which is 30 minutes because yeah. you got to come back even if it's not like exact, you can at least gut check like within that range. And if you start getting too far, you're like, okay, we gotta, we gotta look at this. Yeah. The alarms go off once we get past the odometer. And sometimes the cars, I feel like they wouldn't give us the exact mileage we were getting. And we would definitely pass our number be like, Gregory, yeah. we're like yeah. two miles from where we're supposed to be. Right. And then we see a sign. It's like exit here. Like, oh, right. Yeah. Oh. But we were better to be that yeah. way than, than lost. Absolutely. I mean, you within five miles, you'll know. So you're like, oh, we're five minutes off no matter what, because we're only within five miles. And I, I love that. It's something simple. So something simple. Just walk up these stairs and you got yourself an express pass. The simplest express pass ever. Just walk upstairs and go get it. It's right there. But it's 1,100 steps. And if those of you don't know, that's at least a half a mile. Empire State Building is 1,500 steps. So if you think about it, it's not that much uh, shorter than the Empire State Building, which if, if you've been in New York City, holy cow. Now I'm starting to get understand how high this thing was. You guys are in incredible shape. Did you expect Rob to be able to finish it? And why the hell did you stop? I can't see you guys getting like that tired. Yeah, a few, few different things. And Johnny, hop in because there's a few different, few different reasons. One... Uh, the steps, yeah, like I, good. Uh, I didn't know that about the Empire State Building. That does put a lot of perspective to it because I did hear 1,100 steps. I'm like, yeah, that really wasn't that much. But those steps were steep. Those steps were very steep. At the very beginning, like where they kind of show where the steps are, it's it's low. Like it doesn't look like it's all that much. And then it just jets up. It is like a, I don't know, just a straight line upwards. So one, you kind of underestimate a little bit when you're looking at the bottom of the hill. Once you start getting up there, it is pretty tiring. Like, shout out to Rob, shout out to to Steve for for finishing that. So, uh, is it thighs? Yeah, is it really kneecaps? What, what what was it that was burning? Lungs. Lungs. All of it, glutes and lungs. We have a ski jump in Park City, and there it they, they race those stairs, and there's people that will just go and run those stairs as like part of their workout. Uh, oh, but oh, yeah, oh, brutal. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not. That is yeah. not my favorite. But why did you give up? Why did you give up? Well, part of it too is again, it looked like it kind of finished out. It looked like they were almost to the top, versus it actually finishing out and then continuing up. So there was more time to make way, but at least from that calculation, it looked like it, it could go either way. Oh, you couldn't. Then, you couldn't really tell. Couldn't tell, couldn't tell. Because again, we we did not analyze the situation. We came into this, we see Rob Corey going up, we see Todd Ashley coming down. And mind you, we already saw a team give up. And it's not like Todd and Ashley are out of shape. So they're right. like, this is too much for us. And they've already given it a shot. So we would then have to do their work and then some because they started when Rob and Corey were farther down. Um, and then on top of that, like, again, we had two wins under our belt. It was like, okay, if we're not getting this express pass, we need to win this leg. Like that's going to make okay. it worth it. It's not forward thinking, but at least in the moment, I think that was a priority of ours. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. get that up. Sorry, yeah, no, that's a good point because we were we were ahead, and I think maybe maybe it was a little bit cocky of us, but we kind of thought, okay, if we don't get this express pass, we're not at least from our past two legs, we're not too much in fear of getting out. Right. Like I, I don't, I, it, at least yeah. like the way that we've been performing, we've been performing pretty well. So like the express pass would help, but we're, we're kind of on a roll right now. And yeah, just to win the leg, that was, that was our number one goal at that point. And going for that express pass would have been so nice, but it would have been a risky because then you got to get up there. You got to, you know, harness up, you got to wait for them to go down. Then you have to go down. And Todd and Ashley were already way ahead, like starting the ski yeah. thing. So it kind of got into our heads and we we're like, okay, we're just going to gun it for the first place. That's, that's not cocky. That's the absolute best attitude to take. Absolutely. And, you know, Todd and Ashley were like the best team to get there first, to have the opportunity because they're, they've sort of been like a middle, upper middle of the pack team mm -hmm. 
who happened to get there to the clue box first and had like th that's the type of team that an express pass is really valuable for because to your point like you're not worried about getting eliminated but as more and more teams get out upper middle of the pack is suddenly the back of the pack yeah. um so really i felt for them they're always that. so close but they always do something to mess up they always do something to ruin it like and it's just it just feels like there's every leg todd and ashley there's one thing that you could pinpoint as to why they didn't win the leg uh and, but they, i mean they're fifth fifth fourth third fifth fifth second th i mean third second i mean that's pretty consistent and and it's, it's a good place to be when you're ready to let's stay in the <coughs> stay in the race and take the lead at the end because everybody knows it's the last one that counts <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. You can yeah. ask the undefeated Patriots right there, um, uh, uh, Joey. You could we're, be we're undefeated problems, during the regular we're gonna season. We're going to straighten it out. But if, fact, you, if you lose that last game to the Giants in the Super Bowl, it really doesn't matter if you had an undefeated season, right? It's just they actually they're actually on a bye this weekend, and they lost to the bye twenty eight to three. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get to it here. The good stuff. Uh, we're going to um, throw a little shade here. Greg and John throwing some shade for the first time in the episode. First time in the whole season. What's going on? Greg and John, did anybody notice Greg and John? Yes, uh, they loved it. Robin and Chelsea, they chose a detour, so they do have an independent thought. And even while saying it, it didn't even sound like very mean. It just sounds matter of factly when you I didn't say anything at them. I said there is such a thing as independent thought. I said nothing about those girls. Okay. Claiming neutrality neutrality. Are you the lawyer? Hold on. Hold on. I didn't think you were the <laughs> Well, I think the thing that got me, I like Germany was one thing, but in this, like, when we left the roadblock, they had finished before us. And as we're getting directions, we can see them stalling in their car, literally waiting for us to get so the directions annoying. and then take So off. annoying. Which is like, that's <laughs> when I was like, okay, you're not even trying. You're literally just waiting for it. Like, what if we, like, we didn't so get directions? Annoying. I don't know. Um, so that rubbed me the wrong like, way, but I think it's about the same method. I'd have been like, waited until the last minute to, like, bang a right. You know, and <laughs> oh, use it. Was just so funny. You tried. Yeah, I mean, when you they, did try to lose him? It was from the start of the try. lane. I mean, we're following. Like, it drives me nuts. And I, <laughs> so anyway, I appreciated the under the breath, very neutral comment. <laughs> Well, you know, for them, they don't want it. They don't care about winning every leg. They want to survive. And then they figure if they hang with the team that's winning all the legs, uh, at least re recently, that then you can't be in a bad position if you're somewhere near them. So I understand it for them. But as as somebody who uh, doesn't follow and leads packs, it's like uh, if you're behind me, then I'm going to try to lose you. Yeah. I don't want yeah, you following Tyler, me and taking Tyler, my direction. Tyler and I, we had a team following us, and it's so annoying because you know they're doing it. So here's the, here's the behind the scenes stuff that we have already told on this show numerous times. The reason that they hate that too is because they are getting directions, which means they have to wait for that person to sign that waiver. And then if you just follow another team or ask that same person, that same person doesn't need to sign a waiver again. So you make up that five minutes of them reading and signing the waiver. It's those little things that irk the hell out of you during the race when a team's behind you stealing that yeah. your person because well, Rob when mm -hmm. Rob walked up behind him and kind of grabbed, almost grabbed the combination, mm -hmm. uh, he just, I just saw him kind of slide in there. It was like, mm, what do you got going on? But then he just straight out asked. And there's no way you're not giving him the combination. Right. Yeah. Unless you're Justin, of course. What do I got Justin, to gain like, by giving some some loser mind my information? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Go ask somebody. Go ask somebody else, loser. No, nah, I would never. <laughs> Yeah, but we, we, did, we did talk about that, though, because it is sort of a risk on their part, right? Like, I would be terrified to follow a team because I, I like, we, yeah. and I, we both like to have the control in our hands. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they followed and they kind of, like, took the risk, like, worked out for them. So, yeah, you know, you can't. You they can't trusted really you more than there. themselves. Yeah. And that's something I could <laughs> never do on the race. Like, because if, right. if you went anyone. the wrong way and we were in the last two teams, I would be so pissed for not trusting my gut. The biggest, yeah. one of the biggest things that I tell anybody ever who's ever going to be on the show is trust your gut. There's something there. The earth, the energy, whatever the hell you want to believe in, your gut, believe it. If Trust it. And you'll see here that, like, not trusting your gut affected people on the on leg seven. Not trusting your gut affected people this leg. 
Steve and Annalie knew they were lost as soon as they started the leg, but still kept going in the wrong direction. Trust your gut. Stop. Ask for more directions. Go in a di Trust your gut always. Always. Better trust your gut than some other dumb team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we, had, we had one of those in Germany where we were going the wrong direction, or where we thought was the wrong direction for a while. But we, something in us was just like, just keep going, just keep going. Because we had to go, there was a huge detour that we had to go like around these huge woods. And some guy told us like 50 miles back, like there's one town that you should go to. And we just kept trusting our gut and going there. And it, and it worked out. So there is something there. So, all right, let's talk another one. Uh, Steve and Annalie, ever since getting that U-turn, they have been mentally screwed. They cannot get their stuff together, arguing, fighting, missing the signs, going up and doing the whole damn uh, express pass thing just because they missed the sign. Two separate teams missed that sign hanging right there. I love when production does that, but it was, was pretty obvious if you're actually looking for it. But when you're in a race, you're not looking at the little things. You're looking at the big picture. And you missed the little details. And you pay. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, here's another, but like, here's a moment of like gut check. Mm -hmm. Do you really think you were the last person, last team to show up to a clue box and nobody else got the express pass? Yeah. That's yeah. like, you know, even that, you're useful. right. Even that. But her mentality was our, the only way we could stay in this race is if we get the express pass and use it. And, and she probably, I mean, at that point, you know, the most dangerous person is the person who's got nothing to lose. At that point, if she didn't see the taken sign, she's like, okay, like maybe someone took it. Maybe no one took it. Like this is our only shot. Like we can yeah. either not go for it and lose or go for it and lose. So yeah. Well go yeah. For it. The if way she's that I thought. She's convinced that you're losing. And I think that that's one thing with self-drive legs that like you you do end up spaced apart from people. Like you, you go longer times and distances without seeing other teams. And so you do start questioning that. But I was always like, I, I always went back to, if we're struggling this hard, other people are struggling this hard too. Like we can't, and, and it, it's like, it's really hard in those desperate moments to not deviate from what has been working for you. But going back to that, and even when you're feeling desperate, just like running the race, like the way that you, plan to run the way the race um i mean that goes back to competitive skiing years of like you show up to a competition with a plan and you don't deviate from the plan regardless of what everybody else around you is doing like stick to the plan and it gets really really hard when you start getting desperate and you feel like you're in the back of the pack mm -hmm. and, and look, at, to that look point. at how good steve and Anna Lee did when they thought they were already out and the same with um the army buddies did they once they once all that stress leaves them well we're out let's just have fun mm. they blew through the tasks because they were just doing it. It, it it was an amazing thing when you get that level of stress like jen says jen's when she's skiing she's not gonna you know alter her routine just to try to get more points because somebody else is doing something different yeah it's the same with like gymnastics and all those types of things where they're going to try something crazy and when they just let all that stress wash away and enjoyed themselves they were doing great. And that's the difference between like legs one and two and three, where you have all these teams and legs eight, nine, and 10, where yeah. you're so worried about the person next to you. That's going to cause you to fuck up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Greg, John, were your cameramen and sound guys going up too, or did they have set guys up the, up the express pass? Good point. Well, yeah, did they have they set had, cameras? They yeah, they had set guys, uh, I guess they had, you know, they had the drone kind of showing us the entire time. And then they had, you know, people up top and then people up the bottom right before we went up. And I'm so glad that they did because they would have gotten a lot of sweat, a lot of panting. It would have been an ugly job. Oh my gosh. Because I, I was like, guys. that's something I didn't see any of the camera crew or the sound guys uh, as you guys were going up and down. They took those long shots and like, hmm. So there was no, but I guess the long shots were the good ones and the ones at the top and bottom was where they needed it. Huh. Yeah, I mean, those camera guys, they're such in good shape. Like, I think they could have done it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> serious. But they, they would have definitely tried to talk you guys out of it. You guys don't really want to go to the Express Pass, do you? <laughs> like, somebody already got that. You don't want to. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. A little bit of the uh, the most uneven uh, d detour of the season. I think this one was just this of all of the detours whole season. This one was the most uneven. That housework. Well, we did have we did have the puppets and the 
uh, like puzzle mosaic in India. That one, yeah. that was night and day, an hour versus 10 minutes. But this one was close. It was close. Well, yeah, I guess teams, teams took forever on that one, too. So field work, which is basically uh, brute strength with a little bit of attention to detail. Not that much, really, because it's hay. I mean, sh sh everywhere. And then you got housework, which is attention to detail, putting stuff together. Uh, but just seemed like no matter how good you were at it, it was going to take a certain amount of time. Um, whereas with... Yeah. The hay task, teams got in there after other teams and passed them. Uh, so basically, if you had a good strategy about doing things, if you could figure it out and just muscle through it, you could you can make up some time. Yeah, that was that was probably our biggest downfall, too, for the hay challenge, because we kind of thought the same thing. I mean, we were originally going to do the bee challenge, but then Todd and Ashley and Robin, or, yeah, Robin and Chelsea were going to do the hay challenge. And we'd rather like compete against them than like take a risk and, you know, try to do a different detour than them. Mm -hmm. So we ended up doing the hay challenge and we thought it was a brute strength challenge as well. We felt like, okay, we just got to throw this hay up on the barrel and we'll be straight. But you're right. It is, it was the strategy portion of it. Cause when we got there, we were the, you know, we were the first people there. We didn't know how much hay we needed to put on these barrels. So we kind of just threw it up. Didn't really matter about like how compact it was just kind of took our time with it. But then once we found out we didn't need to get that whole fat thing of hay on those barrels, then that really is what, what took us out. Yeah, because it seemed like Rob and Corey went in there and just demolished it. The speed that Todd and Ashley, they went in there, they just crushed the sounds. And then it was that little raking thing being next to the nice, cleanly raked. No matter how good yours was, you weren't going to get past because right next to you is that beautiful, clean raking. <laughs> yeah. The one thing we didn't know is that we could like stuff the hay right on the floor like i think we right. thought it had to be on the first rack but we looked over at robin corey's and their floor was just like as if you had to clean your house before your mom got home just like stuck <laughs> under and we were like, right, let's clean up that and as soon as we did that we were out of there but like where you said it was really hard to retroactively stuff and compact the hay we had already put on because when we went to the example the farmers weren't done they only put up a quarter of the wall so we were like oh quarter of the wall easy let's make it cute and then we found out read our clue always read your clue this isn't an always read your clue story that's the thing how how long do you think that task took you total half hour like 10 years i don't know it was like it was hey <laughs> all it just didn't end. like you would rake up just like pounds of hay put it up and then they were still so much hay left. Yeah, it would repopulate while you were putting it up. For sure. <laughs> it would repopulate. City boys learning what the hay is like, and unfortunately uh, for uh, Rob, he learned a tough lesson about what hay is like. Uh, he's allergic, I guess, um, and started busting out. Arms started looking like Schwarzenegger. He started swollen up as if he just like instantly jacked himself up with uh, some steroids. But then uh, he stopped for Benadryl, and all was right in well the world. Thing is, the same thing happened to Gregory in the car, and he's our driver. <laughs> and so we're driving, he's itching, we're seeing patches around. Oh him. no. Um, we oh, almost like, asked for like a break, like when we got to the city center to just like take a medical break, take the time off the mat. He he plowed through, but it was well, spooky. Well, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even me who asked for it, it was our camera crew who was like, hey, we're gonna like have you stop and like, you know, medical's gonna check you out just because like it was it was getting bad. But oh, no. it, you know, it was happening too. Was it hay fever? So it, it turned I don't know. People are saying hay fever in chat, so I'm like, I don't know. I think hay fever is when you it's, it's something with the mind, right? I, I don't, I don't know if that's anything. I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's totally different thing. I have no idea. I just thought it was just in general allergic to hay. Hey, I'm surprised there was no hay. I love the, the sneezing during the sneezing during the interview was the best. He's like, just, just thinking about it. I'm just thinking about it. I can't think think. Was sneeze. That was not fake. And I wish I could. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> uh, so, if you're wondering why so many teams got lost looking for a skyscraper, which is usually the tallest building in the city, that's because it was over an hour drive away. It wasn't just like let's look and see where the tallest thing was. They had to drive an hour, find the city. But then it should have been pretty easy to find being well, a, it was the tallest it was also the tallest city in yugoslavia so wasn't there some more buildings that had been recently built that were actually taller than that it's kind of like philadelphia with a guy with a hat yeah used to be with ben franklin so and yeah yeah Mm. Yes, it was. It, it was. It used to be the the tallest building, but I mean, right. Now, that was the ordinance that you couldn't build above the 
thing or something. Yes. Well, the tough part for teams wasn't necessarily finding the skyscraper. It was finding that darn garage because it was an underground garage too. It wasn't anything that was really well signed. So uh, I think that's where, honestly, Gregory and I got to make up a lot of time. Yeah, Morgan and Leo yeah. went to the wrong one. Right. We have to get to the yeah, spiral yeah. staircase so I can make a comment on Rob. What did, what did you, uh, how did you find the right one? Did you get good directions? Did you just happen to notice it? Well, funny enough, when we were still at the Hay Challenge, we got our directions to the garage, and then we got our walking directions to the tower as well. Just did it all in one go. And while we were driving, we did just that. We found the tower first. Then we took the, the walking directions from the garage via car, parked the car, and then did it backwards, essentially. Um, and so, yeah, it was harder to find the garage, but a little easier with our walking directions to do it. So that's how we ended up yeah. finding it. And this is this is the second time too that Johnny and I have benefited from these long drives because when we were in Germany after we had finished the, the the scaling challenge, the one with the map, you know, we were in like sixth place at that time, and then we just happened to get really good directions and we jumped up to first. The same thing happened with this too. Like Todd and Ashley left, like Rob and Corey left. We were kind of feeling the heat a little bit, and yeah, like Johnny said, we got some we got some stellar directions and kind of went back and forth. So we got we got lucky on that. But I'm sure we all got the same directions. That's the thing. Google Maps can only vary so much. So, so yeah, you don't all have the same note taking process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. I bet people didn't think about the the walking directions in the way that you did and like the backtracking. And in those moments, it is so hard when you are getting directions to be patient enough to like be really thorough in writing it down. And it sounds like you guys were because you know that it pays off over an hour long drive. Um, yeah. But that's hard to do. Jen's yeah, Johnny was right. Look at look at the how Morgan and Lena give each other directions and how they listen. It's it's like one hears apples and the other one's saying She on. says make a right. And then she was like, you were supposed to make a U-turn. You told me to make a right. Then that, she was yeah. like, yeah, that, their they, dynamic. They from, I think from trading who was navigating and who was driving in that dynamic and yeah you could tell who the oldest sister is morgan definitely talks down to her and lena definitely has a little sister like re almost like respect slash fear of her older sister you can kind of almost yeah. see that dynamic like she'll tend to like hush up and just take it when she shouldn't but that's a dynamic yeah. that brothers and sisters have but you guys somehow fight through that i never you guys are always freaking smiling god are you guys the new team fun well, it's easy to smile when, again, you're like kind of riding first, second, third place. I think it was a, a lot rougher in the dumps that Vietnam day. That Vietnam day, I was in my head between that leg three and four. So I think this is just a, an easier way to be mentally stable. Yeah. All right. So Greg and John, don't take the elevator because it says travel on foot. And then um, Steve and Anna Lee take the elevator. Mm. Yeah, that was, that that was, was funny. That was and then the internet went Ape shit. Travel on foot. I was waiting for it. Does travel on foot allow you to take an elevator? Jen, Hudak. I mean, they are still on feet. <laughs> <laughs> but like, are. I don't know. I, I would have done the same thing that you guys did. And I would have just, I would have been like, I, better safe than sorry. Like we already climbed up 18 million stairs today. Might as well just run down them real quick. Like I, I support your decision making. And unfairly i was maybe hoping there was going to be a penalty but there wasn't uh, same rule yeah. same rules we had in korea that was the same exact thing we took the elevator up to the mat and we actually we popped out of a service elevator right next to the mat and people like what what the hell are they doing here it's like yeah we had to like walk around it was all cordoned off and like oh hi it's, it says just make your way up there they're like Shit. yeah the, if <laughs> The, the answer is and always is read your notes, read the clue. There's usually extra notes or whatever. It specifically said you must take the spiral staircase up. It didn't Not say you down. must take the spiral staircase up and down. It would if have any said. Any in the room, that's called the ambiguity. It would have said take the spiral staircase up and down if you had to. But anyway, if you're ever said, told to travel by foot, that just means uh, taxis, cabs, buses, the travel from one location to the other you're allowed to take elevators escalators masturbators whatever you can take all of those eaters all right so we are running from uh here to there going to the dragon bridge i love this that this is like dragon related and the next episode's in the dragon caves i got oh, this stupid little nerd in me i love it all right greg and john uh win episode 
three in a row. Third episode in a row. You guys take home the dubs. What is the secret? What is the secret to being consistent at the end of the race? What changed from beginning to end? Is it just your beliefs? Or you I think, think, well, I think, we think we've always had it in us. I, and as like you guys know, there's a learning curve to the race, like how to really thoroughly read the directions. There were mistakes. We were making those first few legs that we wouldn't dream of trying to make again, like around now. Um, Vietnam was a tough day as a whole. So that eighth definitely scrapes our, our numbers uh, around that time. But in general, I think it's communication, assuming the best intentions. We wrote all this stuff too. We have in Gregory's notebook, not only our list of detours and what like our ranking would be when we'd see a detour, like how to, to approach one or the other, but also like what our tenants are. And I think keeping those in mind were really important. Damn. But honestly, self-navigation has been pretty good to us. Not going to lie. Yeah. Todd Nash said one of their biggest mistakes was not following uh, Greg and John during the self drives, <laughs> I guess. Uh, and uh, Todd is pretty positive Dracula lived here at the Dragon Bridge. I, I guess so. Good job. Uh, this is uh, the Dracula Bridge. Um, so, okay. Uh, just for my nerdy self, okay, for every trip that we won, we had to pay like anywhere from 2500 to 4000 in taxes. When they give you these points, are these points, uh, are these like tax deductible? Do you have to pay taxes on these points? Is that a way around the taxes? That's a good question. We're not 100% sure. Oh, yeah, you guys didn't get it yet because it's not over. Yeah, yeah. But, but someone was saying the other day that like they give you the points and then you can use those points for, you know, the trip that they gave you or you can use those points yeah. for something else. Mm -hmm. So I guess like... It has some type of like their own currency or something. Yeah, I just thought lines. that this was a great way around the tax issue because for those of you who don't know, if you win a trip on the Amazing Race, you don't get a free trip. You get a, a ten thousand dollar trip, a twenty thousand dollar trip that you have to pay taxes on. So if your trip is ten thousand, you're paying two to three thousand dollars in taxes. We, we don't a, actually know yet because yeah. they don't. They, they didn't get that. I, I, you're right. It's not on air. You're right. They don't know. <laughs> Tell us I later. Think, what would be kind of nice is if they gave us the points and then took away the amount of points that we would have paid in taxes. And that would that be way, awesome. Yeah. You know, when when you great. use points for like JetBlue or Expedia or Hotels.com, you, you always have to pay the taxes still. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll turn that into a dollar value and it'll have yeah, an I think they, I think they're going to have to pick what. Like, yeah. When we, when, Not when to you, be when negative. You, when you use a, when you use points on a plane ticket, ticket, it's like you use five thousand points, you're gonna pay eleven bucks for taxes. Yeah, but that's right. playing paying taxes on the plane ticket. I'm talking about at the end of the year, like when I had to add the sixty thousand oh, dollars. I, I, I had to pay the yeah, sixty thousand yeah, dollars yeah, to yeah, my yeah. earned income, and then that they took twenty five thousand, twenty six thousand right off in taxes. Yeah, that's that's not income. I'm fingers crossed that you're right on this for everyone who has won trips, but yeah. I'm not I'm not very confident. Yeah, they'll get. Why go to they'll these points? This one key cash experience, like. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I can't wait to, to. I love following the amazing races when they go on these trips because yeah they don't they don't slouch on these trips. These trips are dope. They they give you some oh, really great. cool stuff. Uh, well, so the funny thing is, we didn't know either of our trips, the New Zealand or Namibia, until we watched them on TV because we really like found out we were in first and we're just freaking out and we see phil and i'm just like phil's in front of me and meanwhile he's talking about all this stuff we're wow we're like oh cool we're like seeing big cats that's awesome that's two of like the, <laughs> two of the incredible like an, an african safari and like new zealand which is like another incredible unique place so that's pretty awesome we got todd and ashley foot race was it foot race or was it not like oh, yeah. you guys you guys had that strategy where like you know let them lead the way and then we'll just overtake them like you were that confident in your running skills that you could just over i mean a marathon runners i would guess yeah i mean they 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 hauled it especially todd he was like carrying both backpacks at the same time he's a big like, dude man <laughs> yeah he's a big dude he was he was going and even with the stairs um, it definitely was a foot race. We we were pretty confident that we could that we could overtake them. There was at some point where we were trying to get directions slash like help Robin and Chelsea out. Yeah, really Robin and Chelsea were in the car and were asking us where the garage was while Todd and Ashley were asking for directions. Oh my god! Sorry, so, we're racing for so first, that, losers. No, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, we saw that uh, 
Todd and Ashley kind of knew or at least got some direction to where to go. And we saw them take a left, but we thought it was straight. We were like, okay, well, we'd rather just stay with them Ooh. rather than like taking our own way and like getting lost or something like that. So we did yeah. end up, we did end up kind of going the same way. And then just like jetting past them and seeing when you saw Phil. Yeah. And it was crazy. Cause like my backpack was opening somehow. I don't know <laughs> how I think from all. So like my sweater fell out, my jacket fell out, my toiletries fell out, and I kept having to like go back and forth and get them. Oh my god! And it was like part of me who was like, just leave it, just leave it. Like you're racing for first, but as you guys know, like once you re leave something on the race course, you can't go back and get it. So I was like, nah, I kind of need my jacket for the rest of this leg. Technically, um, if you could see it from the mat, you can get it. Was was the the rule? It, it was because a, a lot of teams I, drop their bags long, and run. Yeah. That was far if, out of my sight, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> if race doesn't win the Emmy for editing this year, then something is wrong because they the editing has been so perfect this entire season, especially with the with the matte finishing. It's been I think they won it last year for editing, but this is hmm. so much better. Yeah, um, Rob and Corey, another solid finish in the top three. Joel and Garrett, after going back and getting their book. Oh, we didn't talk about that. Jo Joel and yeah. Garrett forgot their book again and went back and got it. Your notebook, the book that's the one you're studying every night for that final memory task. Do you go back and get it? Yes or no? <laughs> Jen, who well, that? Jen, you going back and getting your memories? You going back and I, getting your book? I was debating this, and I think they probably had a better sense of how much more time um, Steve and Anna Lee had left on that task. Um, I very much valued my notebook. I mean, there are like, it wasn't just notes during the race. It was literally Christy and I would debrief after every single leg and write down everything and draw pictures of the person that it. met us. <sighs> stop that. I mean, it was so, yeah, I probably in their situation, I probably would have gone back for it. Joey Cavino, you going back again? You didn't even take notes, did you? Did not take notes. Had it all up here. <laughs> It's all up here. <laughs> Greg, John, you guys going back or what? I think we're going back. Granted, like we were studying enough. I felt like maybe at any time I could write down everything that we kind of had in the notebook up to that point. Um, yeah. But again, like it, it changes when you see Stephen and Elise still there and, and you can kind of have that, that reference point. On their podcast, yeah. I think they said five to seven minutes was was yeah. was ultimately how long – you know, it took them out of their way, I guess, maybe 10 minutes total to go there and back. But still, I just wanted to know the mindset of a team. Are you going back? Is that that important? That that For us, I mean, there was so many things in that book that it would have really sucked to not have. Like the little notes, yeah, but, like but you said. have it and then not be in the final three then. Yeah. Because that, you have only because you have the book. Right. But to also to get to the finals and not win it is heartbreaking. Trust so me. I've heard. <laughs> yeah trust me trust everybody on this show <laughs> except maybe greg and john we don't know if you guys win but oh, the rest yeah. of us are the Hopefully happy losers happy. we all Hopefully finished the race we finished the race we just uh didn't <laughs> well yeah, there's nothing there's nothing worse than having to say well i got to experience everything the race yeah. had to offer phil <laughs> i just want to go yeah, okay <laughs> just choke me now i don't want to hear it <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, Greg. So in the final three, it was kind of nice because the the final three, the three people for this leg were the three teams who were on the train with us. So we went through that whole debacle, oh. and it ended up being kind of the same output as if oh, we had that's right. Yeah, that's cool. Kind of nice. Yes. So I am going to flash on the screen for uh, for those of you who don't know. This is also in my Discord, which I think from now on we'll just use Discord. But uh, this is in my Discord. If you want to see, I put the notes there from the uh, from the race. If you want to see the pictures and the, and the, the charts and the things that I talk about, uh, it's in the Discord. You can kind of see it. I don't know up above in the the links above. All right. So here is an actual. Bam. Uh, this is done on Reddit. There's also somebody on Reddit who does this, and I just, I take it rather than redoing it. Uh, it does an awesome job. It shows you uh, piece by piece uh, every stop of the leg and where each team is during each stop. And the biggest changes are obviously uh, at the detours and the roadblocks. And uh, the biggest problem with Morgan and Lena, they left in like fourth place from the detour. And then they had to go, you know, to to that building and then the Dragon Bridge. And from that building and the Dragon Bridge, 
they lost one, two, three, four places just in traveling. That's rough. To that building, that the spiral staircase building, and then to the Dragon Bridge. Lost four places and got eliminated. Self-driving killed them. That's that's all yeah. about it. So learning how to read maps, trusting your gut, knowing when even the little things like you guys did, marking the speedometer, where we can't go too far out of our way that way, uh, that can all help. And those things would have helped Morgan and Lena if they had some of those same um, some rules going. Oh, yeah. good news from Vicky Casey: travel points are not taxable. So Whoa. it's a workaround. Oh, that is large, and you guys want cash too, so you don't have to use that for tax. Woo, get it, boys! <laughs> that, that, the cash, the cash to you when you could actually write off stuff that you you know paid you bought for, for the race. Yeah. The race. Yeah, so any trainings kind of you did, anything you did, you could write all that stuff off. I did. Oh shoot, we gotta talk to like some tax advisor for I can sure. tell you, I, I wrote no, we, off I want over ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. So let me know what you need. Yeah, our, wow. first, our four four first place finishes were all cash. So and mm. yeah, wow. in, in both me, I'll, I'll show you how. I think oh, I made money wow. it. Yeah, <laughs> we we had a thirty. We had a thirty thousand dollar trip that we won. And we were supposed to pay nine grand in taxes, and we were like, "Can we do something else, like to make this like cheaper?" <laughs> uh, it was like into Hawaii one. We had this like King Kamehameha like palace rooftop thing, and we were like, "Can we just get a regular room?" And they made it ten grand. I was like, "We took twenty grand off by changing the room." So you wow. could do crazy things like that, and it wow. turned like nine grand in taxes into like three grand in taxes. So much more. Um, but anyway. Palace. Anything yeah. that you guys want to clear up from any of the legs previously that maybe misunderstood something they didn't show, something that you wish they would have shown um, that they, they didn't get a chance to show? Any interactions with other teams, interactions with each other? Yeah, I fr from the previous thing, the mustard. How the fuck did you guys do it? I, I was telling my wife, I can't, I would have been out of the race for that. I can't, I don't have that good of taste. Like you did that first time and just banged it all. Yeah, this is that, this is that. Well, well, one is so it's nine mustards and you do it together. So it's really four to five mustards that you have to remember each. So it's not too terrible that way. And then two, like mustard, it's not something like, I don't know, something a little bit bland. Like mustard is pungent and you can tell the difference. Even if you have a bad taste palate, those mustards, it was like, okay, this is definitely it a pits or this is definitely barboring or whatever they it were. It was like and honey, beer. Tell. It was like yeah, very different. I was, I was trying to figure is it that? that different that it would because i was like oh i'd be out I, I definitely have to go to the, the the soccer ball one because but everyone seemed to be banging it out so easily i'm like Damn. well i will tell you joey yeah it's not just your tongue it's your eyes too and so you got a little bit of the color oh, you got a little yeah, bit of the brilliant. Little CD, so you're able to to do that as well but I uh, even alone, the that, there are wow. different there are different elements the spiciness how sweet it is just like right. all the elements you got in taste yeah the, the the visual that's 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 like what, what do you think it would be hotter if they hid the the honey yes I mean, the most that's what we thought we thought they were going to do like one like three card monty style flipping it around but um thankfully you could see it yeah. did, you eat, did you eat the uh did you eat the brat we gave it to a family who loved the amazing race who gave us our directions to the pit stop oh, oh that's so amazing. cool that's awesome yeah, greg john <laughs> what is the best thing that you did to prepare for the amazing race after finishing it, what do you think was the most valuable thing or the best thing that you did to prepare? Um, I mean, physically, nothing nothing too wild, at least for me. I think truly, truly, truly the best thing is just watching the show. It, I mean, it's almost it almost feels like, you know, like we're AI models and we're just like feeding our brain data of like what to do, what not to do, what's best, what's not best, you know, just like all those little facts and learning from people's past mistakes. That helped so much because there were multiple times throughout the season where, you know, we were going to make one decision, but, you know, like a little scene from like season, you know, 12 popped up that they yeah. were like, okay, well, they did that without a penalty for it. So maybe we shouldn't do that. Who knows if it would have made a difference, but in the moment, it was easier to make decisions knowing past data. Yeah. And as we were watching episodes, we would take notes. We'd notice things like if you're at the Spanish steps, they had a counter. So we brought like a, a clicker for that kind of stuff and um, a few hmm. things helped there. Uh, Gregory, his first car was stick shift, so we knew he was going to be the driver. Nice. Uh, Filled it on stick, and I knew I was going to be the navigator, so I definitely practiced with my girlfriend just getting around, not just like home, but also, uh, you know, New York, Chicago, France, 
uh, Lisbon wow. without any uh, directions. And so really like relied on that compass Smart. and asking people for directions, which was a, a new way to live for sure. These are just all That's questions like, from, from the internet. Uh, did your jobs yeah. help you at all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny because, you know, sometimes we talk about our jobs on the show and a lot of my friends are like, like, what does being a software engineer have to do with like putting up hay? And it's like <laughs> nothing, you know, they kind of they kind of probe you with the questions to make you talk about it. But I mean, I, I do think it did help us for specific challenges, mainly for like the attention to detail challenges, because John and I are computer scientists and like, we, you know, I'm a software engineer. He was a software engineer. And like the debugging aspect of these challenges were huge for us. Like, OK, we know we got it wrong the first time which is happens all the time in coding, like it's not going to run the first time. And so now you got to go back and you got to figure out what you did wrong, which is what we love. Like, I love that. about my Yeah. Team. And so when I you're nice, I saw the interns. I know how it works over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get really, you get really comfortable with the computer telling you you're wrong when you're like, I'm right. Like you have to be wrong. Cause I know everything I'm doing is right. Then you find your mistake and you're like, oh, it was me. I, I was the problem. <laughs> yeah. I was the problem with drama. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. How much time did you guys have um, to prepare for the race, like from when you knew you were going on to when race started? Three weeks, I think. Okay. Something like that, yeah. And it was go time at that point. Like yeah. from when we got it the call, like weeks. you're in to when we started. Yeah, I think it was like a little, a little over three weeks. Okay. Is that about your time as well? Yeah. Yeah. They don't give you that much. No. But they tell you when you're starting, like you get that very first call, they say, like the race starts now. And so we, you should be preparing throughout yeah. the application process, but it's hard like to watch and binge episodes or to like train when there's still a maybe on whether or not you're going to make it. Cause it's going to feel all that harder Definitely. if they give you that rejection call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just got to believe man. that was me. I'm like, I'm on the show. They're not stopping me. I'm getting on the damn show. I watched every season three times. <laughs> Took no time. Fuck. I don't know. Ah! <laughs> ah! All right. Uh... Yeah. After, after we found out we got on to, we dropped like uh, two grand on just like backpacks and like shirts. There you go. Write it like, off. Yeah, yeah. yeah write, write it, it off. off. Here goes. <laughs> All right. So you guys you seem go. to be said. So you guys seem to be really good navigators. Uh, people are questioning uh, how self-driving strategies going in. I guess you guys talked a little bit about that. Any advice for future racers? If you can give future racers one piece of advice, what would you give them? Uh, go for it. No, you go. No, you go for it. Okay. I'll you guys are so, look at you. <laughs> I would say like, and it kind of talked about it before, um, but it really is that aspect of like, it's it's you versus the problem rather than, than you versus each other. I think that helped us a lot in the situations. Cause I think that's your you strongest asset as a team is the way that you guys work together. Yeah, 100%. Like that definitely helped us because if you're trying to figure out a relationship with someone and a problem at the same time, like a puzzle, then you're not going to be able to dedicate 100% of your time to the puzzle or the challenge at hand or anything like that. So yeah, just really knowing that like everyone has the best intentions in mind. And, and just, yeah, I, I, it sounds cheesy and yeah. obvious, but just working insanely well. Absolutely. All right, let's get to the awards. Unless did you have another piece of advice you want to give, John? Uh, read your clue like I, it it's such a standard piece of advice but it is something that that was my number one rule going in and i still didn't do it gregory and i still made mistakes Make some it's mistakes. incredible uh, granted those clues are longer than they appear on yes. tv but the extra yeah, notes you can get through it you have time uh, get through it. Additional details yes. <laughs> all right jen what kind of award are we giving away today we're loving it we doing I'm some i'm so glad that greg and john are our guests because i I don't know that everybody was laugh laughing at the uh, at your comment, but I was laughing at it and <laughs> appreciated it. So my LOL is going. I, I can't remember which one of you said it. Was it you, John? It okay. Me, yeah. Or um, <laughs> independent thoughts. <laughs> I just but the, the, we we all love each other we understand that we're all a family but the best thing about families is we can fight with each other but if anybody yeah. else from outside comes at us we bond together so we're allowed right. to bust each other's chops but we will join arms to defend you guys though because we are family um joey what do you got my era my experienced relationship advice this isn't for any of the racing teams left this is for the fans who do pay attention to the show and ultimately want to be on The Amazing Race. It is to 
look at the fan look at the teams remaining and their relationships each each team has a very specific relationship based on the people involved and it's all working for them and i don't think Stephen and Lee's relationship would work for Robin Corey and the girls and the boys, but the way it's it's so um, invigorating to see these specific relationships and how they're coexisting, even the Stephen and Lee piece because it's a father daughter, and I'm really enjoying that aspect of this season. Really, through virtually all the teams, there are, there is really no villains, but so if you want to be on the show, find yourself a partner like these teams did and fashion your strategy around that yeah 100 percent. and yeah i i think uh for super fan awards there, there's a couple things i could do but and i'm gonna like because you guys are here i think it I, there wasn't any specific things that you guys genuinely do that's like racers recappy that's like super fan award but i think the best feature that you guys have is something that I would strive to have with Diana. It's impossible for us because she's a Philly girl and I'm New York and we just can't talk to each other like you guys do. I don't know. We can't be Colin and Christy, but I think that is the most valuable asset any team can have is an asset that you guys have. So uh, if anything that you could take from the, from the race, I'm going to give you guys a super fan award and I want all the super fans to strive for the way that these two work together, talk to each other, uh deal with problems uh yeah that will will save your team on the amazing race if it's at all possible um so i give you guys a lot of props for that jen and Justin, i said earlier in the show that john and greg have to me and i've never said this about any team and even justin diana and jen and christy i they, i don't see any weaknesses it, do you see any weaknesses in greg and john yes Spill them. They're two alike. <laughs> uh, yes, that, that ultimately could be the downfall. That is the weakness. The weakness is you very much alike. You probably Here we are eight legs into the race, and yes. that has not been yes. at all. It only takes one. It, it only takes one. Well, that's what I was trying to figure out. Could it be dancing? Could it be singing? What could it be that... that... I have a feeling that the weaknesses that you Bad guys have taxi. are probably similar. That's not that's not a weakness in the team no, though, Jim. I just meant like you guys are so similar. You guys do the same job. Your brothers, you guys looked up one looked up to the other, tried to emulate, probably did. So your weaknesses are probably the same weaknesses. So if something comes up where it's both of your weaknesses, and that's it. That's why male female teams tend but to what do is better. It? We don't know what it is and we may never oh, no. see it. They <laughs> their weakness may have already came and gone and they already overcame it. Greg and John, you know what it is? He doesn't have the relationship with his brothers that y'all have, and he's Hell really upset no. about it. I'm probably going to talk about it in detail. I fist fought every one of my brothers at least twice, so I couldn't even <laughs> see you guys fighting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the similarity, the similarity thing is 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 a big one because we were. Really? I think we did talk about that for a second when we were like, okay, well, like we do have some differences. Like I'm stronger and Johnny's a little bit faster. He's like a great memory, and I, you know, I'm better at slimy challenges. So we have some differences. But we definitely have some that converge and are definitely the same. I it, I can't even off the top of my head, but if it ever came up, yeah, we would have been finished. Like absolutely finished. All right. Next week we're going to the dragon caves and caverns. I cannot wait to see this. Uh I'm all a dragon nerd. I those of you who don't know, I dungeon master uh in my spare time because I love being a nerd. Uh uh Todd said, Nope, you're navigating as Ashley tries to show him paperwork. That's never a good sign when he's like, I don't even want to see it. La, 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 la. And then Rob and Corey in a kayak with uh one of them going overboard, feeling sad. And then Anna Lee, um, we saw in another clip, Anna Lee using exit lanes to pass all of the other teams. Little shadiness going on with like the driving it. and i love, I love it. it so we will see what happens as joel stalls on the highway anna lee passes him we're gonna see they're looking for something in the dragon caves it's gonna be fun i can't wait to see what it is they're looking for and what happens greg john love love having you as part of the amazing race family we're always here if you ever need anything there's nothing you could do about it now you're stuck with us <laughs> thank you so much for having us this has been a lot of fun this is our first like 
recap other than our own that we do on YouTube. So well, yeah, um, a lot of pimp, YouTube, promote, promote. How could people check out your yeah, recap? Greg and John, add Greg and John on YouTube. Yeah, feel free. And we'll just kind of give the, the insights from at least what our experience was. And it's for people to know how to race, but also kind of for our own memories, you know, 40 years yeah. down the line to be like, oh yeah, that did happen. They did you, you'll that. forget like, a couple of years, all those yeah. stupid little things yeah. you might forget. So mm -hmm. it's really good that you're documenting it now. Yep. Um, is yeah. there anything else you guys um, want to promote? Anything outside of the race you're doing you want to promote? I was going to say, Reed had a question in the room. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Reed had a question in the room. Is this the first time you all have applied for the race? First time. Last year, we were at our grandparents' 75th wedding anniversary, just Aww. chilling on a beach. And yeah, just like made it our second take. Seven, pretty cringy. Five three, 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 years? 75 years, Seven. yeah. Can we, get the, can we get them on? Can we get them on? <laughs> if if y'all win, if I y'all win, I want to get them on. <laughs> They, they, it would be a lot of repeating yourself. That is a lot of repeating. <laughs> huh? All right, Jen, I know you got to go do the mama thing. I appreciate you guys. Everybody watching, we appreciate you. We know how valuable your time is. It's the most valuable thing that you have. And for you to spend any of it here means the world. Bunch of super fans talking about our favorite show. And we get to do it with fellow super fans and other people who got to live the race. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. We love you and appreciate you, and we will try harder next week as we continue our recaps. Greg, John, thank you. Joey, Jen, have a good one. Take care, guys. Hasta All right. S stream has ended. All right. I do need to post, but Greg and John, my father was a computer science professor at Yale for 32 years. Oh, wow. And Whoa! Jesus yes. Christ.